and God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence this morning. We thank you that you invite us into your Holy of Holies. We pray, Holy Spirit, come and uh, hover over us this morning. Surround us, envelop us, fill us afresh. We come this morning under the blood of the Lamb. We draw close to our Father. We pray, Lord Jesus, you will be enthroned and glorified in this time. God, we want to delight your heart with our offerings of praise, thanksgiving, worship, surrender to open our hearts to receive all that you have for us. Please come Lord Jesus, come and have your way this morning. In your name we pray. Amen.
like the desert needs a blessing of the rain Just like the rain do waiting for the sun again desperate for you this morning we just want all of you lord we want to be captivated by you alone and we want to just be so mindful of your presence around us in us and all that you want to deposit in us lord today we just want to be attentive to it completely we need you lord we need you so much and we need more of you so come holy spirit do what only you can do in our minds our hearts our spirits this morning keep away every distraction drown off every other voice and help us to keep captive lord our attention and our gaze upon you we just want to hear from you today we want to have a greater experience of you today and we want to be filled to overflow today lord Thank you Jesus for this time and thank you for all that's going to unfold throughout this service. We just surrender each one of ourselves to you and pray for a fresh outpouring of your spirit upon us. We love you Jesus and we want more. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. So just want to share a picture that I saw at the spring before service. Um, as I was praying for this new season, I just actually saw the logo of that picture of the logo of Highway, where the, I, I found myself praying about the consuming fire coming and consuming. Uh, so just saw it kind of consuming all that was of the past, um, and uh, sparking a new flame, and then just the streams of living water, refreshing and flowing out of us, and just that thing that it's only in Jesus that both. fire and water and can come together and uh, 
do such an just such an incredible work. And then just as a picture of the logo came. Yeah, so just want to share that. Amen.
Thank you, Lord God. I just want to thank you, Lord God, for your presence here with us. It's for this privilege of being in your presence, being still. Please teach us, Lord God, to be still and know that you are God. Find rest in you alone, Jesus. To know your power and quietness and trust. Come and do your work in each one of our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for just this promise, Lord, that each one of us have experienced, Lord, and I know personally I'm experiencing, Lord, of just you being that still, calm center, Lord, in the middle of a storm. Thank you, Lord, that truly, Lord, you still every fear, every restlessness, that in you, Lord, there is peace, Lord, that even as, Lord, we navigate the storm with you, Lord, you make a way, you part the seas, you calm the storms, Lord. That you are a refuge, our strong tower, Lord. I just come, Holy Spirit, I pray this morning. And just come and just still us again. Keep us stayed and centered, Lord, on the Father, on His heart. Keep us stayed and focused on His eyes, Lord. That we may walk every water, go through every storm, every fire, knowing His absolute sure, firm, steady hand, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us. In your precious and beautiful name, Jesus, we just thank you and pray. Amen.
long for you Nothing else will do Nothing else will do My soul long for you My soul long for you further the deepest longing the deepest yearning the deepest desire of our souls is just for more of you is to experience the fullness lord of your presence in our lives we just thank you for all the work of preparing preparing of readying of this shaping and molding that you have been doing lord in this season we just continue to pray that you just pour your spirit lord out in a greater measure into each one of us into the highway and just overflow lord into our families our neighborhoods our workplaces our cities this nation god we just need you we can do nothing without you just one more of you in Jesus name amen father we welcome this the reign of your holy spirit in this season we just open our hands we open our hearts we lift our faces to you we just say lord let it rain let it rain down on us let us be a generation that um is able father to to experience the full power and the full glory of revival so let your rain come down jesus let us let us be drenched by the power of your holy spirit we pray this in your name lord amen amen holy spirit i pray that you will even as we say that we long for you i pray that you will increase our longing within feet of hunger and thirst and desperation for you so I take the words on our lips lord and do a new work in our hearts even as we sang earlier lord we want to our thirst for you lord be so desperate for you desire nothing else but you no one else but you but we want to be completely abandoned to your grace and mercy and love to your will and purposes come holy spirit even this morning for out the spirit of discontent and dissatisfaction the desire that can only be met by more of you in jesus name amen just to say that we'll be having communion immediately after the next song and some of you like to get ready so we'll do the song love came down and flow from that into communion
we just come to this time with with reverence and gratitude no matter how often we get the opportunity lord to partake of the bread and wine it still blows our mind lord that we would have the privilege of partaking of your body and your blood we just want to thank you for this awesome reminder in jesus name amen the lord jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup saying the cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes We thank you, Lord, that we can partake of your body and your blood. At this time, we thank you that you shed your blood, and we can experience right now, Lord, forgiveness of sin, healing of all diseases, healing of mind, heart, spirit, body, and relationships. thank you that because you died on the cross every curse is broken and thank you that you give us healing freedom and restoration we pray this in the awesome name of jesus amen so if you look at the word we're going to go to 1 kings 19 if you want to open your bible you can Go to one Kings nineteen, and we'll just be on a few verses over there. And come, Holy Spirit, be our teacher. We pray that you will speak into our circumstances, into where you want Highway to be in this season. Let your words be light and life to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so when we come to one Kings nineteen, uh, we're going to read from verse seven. But so if you look at what has ha- what has happened just before this time, Elijah has just gone through an incredible season of three and a half years. and in those three and a half years he's had a time of isolation he's been all alone for a time and then for some more time he's been just with this widow and her son he has seen through that entire three and a half years daily miracles of provision while there was a drought and a famine in the land and even in neighboring lands uh, during this time he has uh, seen the first recorded miracle in the bible of raising the dead then there has been the confrontation with the false prophets on mount carmel which ended with fire coming down from heaven and an outpouring of rain on the land after three and a half years in response to his prayers so this season has seen all of that but the season ends with him in a suicidal depression where he has got to take his life he's fed up with life he feels that he is a failure and all alone and he doesn't want to be alone anymore and he has got to take his life okay. so that is the season that elijah has just 
gone through and in a smaller smaller way i feel we've also gone through a season that is similar in some ways there have been ups and downs there have been highs and lows we've had great expectations and crushing disappointments there's been enforced isolation but also we've had increased fellowship with god and with others because of that time of isolation and i realize there are two possible responses to this past season of 6 months one is that we stay comfortably locked down yeah we may whine and grumble but there is a comfort in that also and we continue having our wonderful times with jesus because we have had more time with jesus than before because obviously we were uh, didn't have so much to do outside we we enjoy our our facebook services and by that i don't just mean highway i know one of the things that happened in this season is people are watching so many services um, because there's so much happening online and you have so much time i was watching this uh, some stupid youtube video and one of the comments was see what stupid things i'm watching because of the lockdown one of the guys writes in the you know people are just fed up bored nothing to do they're watching nonsense yeah and i thought to myself that's exactly what i'm doing also yeah watching the same yeah? stuff watching the same nonsense some dog or puppy or whatever cute cat or whatever it is you know So that's one thing we can do: stay comfortably locked down, and even have nice time. I mean, have more time, more quiet time than we had before, and things like that. More uh, fellowship, in a sense, online. Or we can charge out and get busy as things open up, and you know, we get really busy in our lives. And I think God is saying to us both yes and no. You can't stay hidden anymore. but neither can you get too busy and those are again two mistakes that we can make and last week i spoke about being a scattered church and uh, stepping out and doing things and i think god wants to give us a little perspective about how we do that okay and so i call today's uh, message the cave and the call okay, i'm really i'm quite pleased with my title sounds so nice the cave and the call okay. so there's elijah he is depressed he wants to die and i'm reading from verse 7 the angel of the lord came back a second time and touched him and said get up and eat for the journey is too much for you so he got up and ate and drank strengthened by that food he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached horeb the mountain of god there he went into a cave and spent the night and the word of the lord came to him what are you doing here elijah he replied i have been very zealous for the lord god almighty the israelites have rejected your covenant broken down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword i am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too the lord said go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the lord for the lord is about to pass by then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the lord for the lord was not in the wind After the wind there was an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, "What are you doing here, Elijah?" He replied, "I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too." The Lord said to him, "Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram, also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Meholah to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escaped the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all those whose knees." all whose knees have not bowed down to baal and all whose mouths have not kissed him i want to focus on just some aspects of this i'm not going through to the entire thing 
we won't look at Elijah's complaints and things like that. Okay, but I want to look at what God was saying to him as he stepped out of one season into another, and I believe he's saying the same to us. Okay. The first thing is the cave. So Elijah goes to this cave. Of course, it's a very uh, sacred place. He's on the mount. He's on Mount Horeb. He's in the place where uh, Moses received the Ten Commandments. And while he's over there, God causes the earthquake, the wind and the fire. Oh, first the wind, the wind, the earthquake and the fire. God causes them, but it says that God was not in them. What it means is that he chose not to speak through them to Elijah. Okay? He was clearly in them. It says before the Lord, before the Lord these things happened. So God gave three mighty manifestations but he did not speak to God, uh, did not speak to Elijah in those manifestations. Okay. And of course that would have been familiar to Elijah because Elijah is used to mighty manifestations of God. And yet God chose not to speak through them. And then comes the gentle whisper, the literal meaning of course, uh, the older versions have the literal meaning which is the still small voice. A still small, uh, a small and still or calm or gentle voice which is translated as gentle whisper and Elijah knows that God is in that gentle whisper he comes out and I presume that God speaks to him in that same still small voice and when you think of a still small voice with a gentle whisper there are three things that come to mind when God speaks in a whisper you have to draw close to here you can't stay far away and hear a whisper. And so you have to draw close. And of course it says Elijah went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. He had to draw close, even closer than he was in order to hear what God had to say. Okay. When somebody speaks in a whisper, you have to play, you have to pay close attention. You have to be play pay focused attention. And thirdly, you have to shut out other voices and sounds like just happened just now so i have to i have shut off the ac have i shut off the ac it's still on i thought i shut it off okay i try to reduce the sound so that i could be heard better and uh, okay so you have to draw close to here you have to play pay close attention you have to shut out other voices and sounds in order to hear the gentle whisper and of course this is talking of intimacy okay. and as I, as I had this break of five days and one of the days I was worshipping and suddenly I realized God saying to me that don't think that because you're going to go out of lockdown into a busier time that you're not supposed to have even more times of intimacy. Okay, he said you've got to have even more times of intimacy in this new season. Okay. And God gave us so many opportunities for intimacy in this past season of lockdown. Okay. Not so that we'll be filled up and then go out and get empty, but so that we will do it better. Okay. Think of somebody training for a race or a fight. Okay. They don't train in order to do something else out there. You train in order to do the same thing much better. You're training, you're running and all of that so that you will run faster in the race. You're fighting and training and fighting so that you will fight better. You do the same thing better. And if we think of this as a time of training, it means that in the new season, we do it better. We have even more time for int of intimacy, even more time in His presence, even more intense and better times in this new season. And I realize the big danger is to think that Oh, we've had one so much time there so now we just go out and be busy no you, we need even more time in his presence and even better times in his presence and that's what he was actually training us for in a sense okay. and so god is saying you've got to still stay in the cave you can't let go of the cave that place where you shut out other voices and sounds you pay close attention to me and you listen you do you draw close because then you will hear my whisper. 
and after the cave comes the call. Okay, in this context, of Elijah is uh, depressed. He is disheartened. And what is God's word to him? Okay, after what are you doing here? And Elijah repeats his complaint word to word for word. Okay, the Lord said to him in verse fifteen, "Go." Everything else is connected to that simple word, go. Okay. Effectively, God is saying, Elijah, go. There's still work to do. Okay. Or there's work to do, and it was major work, but of a different kind. You see, it was not as dramatic as the things Elijah had done. But still, that work was crucially important. So, if we look at what Eli, what what's happening here with Elijah, Elijah's new role was to disciple. Elisha, and to disciple other prophets, and so the schools of prophets were set up in Elijah's time. Okay, his role was to anoint the next generation of leaders in the nations, including, of course, Elisha himself. Okay, and so if I use the word intimacy there, I'm going to use the word initiative here. He had to go and initiate new things that God was calling him to do. Okay. And in order to do that, again, three things we see here: he had to let go of past triumphs and failures, which was in the previous season actually. Okay, he had to let go of past triumphs and failures. He had to let go of earlier confidence as well as earlier fears, in order to get into this new thing. He had to step out into new, uncharted areas. I mean, look at Elijah. He is a lone wolf. You know, he is a lone ranger. He does everything alone. And now he's got to get Elisha. He's got to disciple him. And of course, you know, if you remember when Elijah is going up into heaven, he's actually trying to get rid of Elisha. He wants to do that last thing alone, just the way. I mean, I think that he, that's what he likes. He likes being alone. And Elisha is so stubborn; he refuses to leave him. Okay, so Elijah has to step out into new, uncharted areas. And similarly, God is saying the same to us. Okay, as we go into a new season, and maybe seasons before that, there may be triumphs and failures, things we're confident about, things we're fearful about. Uh, let go of those, and to step into new, uncharted areas. Okay. In order to do that, we have to trust what we hear in the secret place. In the cave comes the call. We have to trust what we hear in the cave, and then step into the call. We have to, we have to trust that still small voice that we hear. And so, as we go into this new season, as we become the scattered church, God has been preparing us for both, for the cave and the call. He's been preparing us for intimacy, as well as for initiative. He's been. He's telling us to listen to that still small voice and to step out into new avenues of ministry. And after this uh, message, I'll just share with you what we're doing in the next season and what I'm hoping that you will do in this next season. But let's just take a moment. Let's be silent. and maybe even in the silence there will be a gentle whisper that you can hear and thank you holy spirit for the seeds that you've deposited in us today and believe you've done so in each one of us i pray lord for the hundredfold harvest Pray, Lord, for the explosion of what you put in us, that it be released with that dynamic power. And through it all, Lord, I pray for increased times of intimacy, we want to draw so close to you, Lord. 
let everything flow out of that place. I want to thank you for uh, what lies ahead for each one of us, uh, for our homes, for our families, and for us as a church, for our cities, and even for our nation. Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. So I'd like to share with you um, what we're doing in this the next week onward. Okay. So Tuesday to Friday mornings will continue. Okay. So just for some of you who don't know what's happening in the mornings, we meet from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Yeah, so we meet from 6 to 7 a.m. And that's from Tuesday to Friday. Monday is holiday for highway, so we don't have any meetings on Monday. So Tuesday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And uh, we have some worship, some prayer. And then I teach and I've been doing Psalms. So we've reached Psalm 40. I'm not on all the Psalms so far, but up to Psalm 41. So we have a meditation on a Psalm. So that's the morning time. Uh, all these evening meetings we've cancelled. The reason for that is I want you to do something in the evening. Okay. At least one evening a week, uh, either Monday or Tuesday or Thursday or Friday. <coughs> Try to do that twos and three thing that we've been speaking about. Try to have something in your home, even if it just starts with two or three of you stay in the home. Or somebody who's close by who can join you. Just just get started with something. Okay? Whether you pray together, worship together, listen to a talk together, whatever it is. Try to set aside one of those evenings which are all free now. And start a little small little ecclesia and see where God takes that. Okay? So that's why I've kept all the evenings free. Except for Wednesday. Wednesday we're having a an extended time which we've been thinking about for a while now so Wednesday we'll be having a time of worship and prayer maybe I'll teach something maybe we'll see a video something like that it's from 8 p.m. to midnight so it's four hours so I think some people have been waiting to have a long stretch of time so you can come for the full four hours or you can come for some of that time as you feel led to what you feel you can manage Okay, so that's Wednesday. Is that clear? Wednesday, 8 p.m. to midnight. Okay. Uh, then, and the next thing is Saturday. We've been having just those six hours night watch. And then once a month, we've been having 24 hours. We're going to make it 24 hours every Saturday. So every Saturday, you can take a slot, a one-hour slot to pray. And now it doesn't have to be just late in the night. It can be throughout the day. You can take any slot in the day, but we want to cover uh, 24 hours every Saturday. What? There will be something worse, it doesn't change. No, it doesn't change. You see, it's easier in fact. You you can choose as well. Everybody was cramming into that 6 hour early morning slot and it was always either 12 to 1 or 5 to 6. More, most Mostly people were in those slots because that was the easiest. But you can just spread out through the day whenever it's convenient for you. So that's Saturday. and. Of course, we started Alpha yesterday, that was at 6 o'clock and that will continue. And the second Alpha course is starting next Sunday, again at 6 o'clock. Now the reason for that was this particular the Saturday Alpha is on Zoom, so people can come on laptop or tablet or mobile phone or whatever they want to. But the Sunday Alpha is only possible on a laptop because we are testing Alpha's platform. And so that's a limited group of people but we're having it on Sunday evening. Just in case you want to be there, you can call and tell, ask Anila or Pervin if it's possible to join that because that's a smaller group and we're just testing out this platform. Okay. And Sunday service, of course. So that's all we're doing. Okay. It's, a much reduced, uh, it's a much reduced program. The reason for that is that I want you to do things. I want people to open their homes in two then three then they'll become four then five then sixes and so on you can start with just a family 
if you want to okay and at the same time also praying about what god wants you to do in terms of reaching out okay and so you have lots of time free for that yes
Cause I know you're in there play. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are here, Lord. That you have spoken to us through through this time of prayer, through through the time of worship, Lord. Help us really still ourselves so we can hear that whisper, Lord. That sweet whisper from you, just speaking to us like a father speaks to their beloved child, Lord. Help us drown every other voice, Lord. And just focus on you and to hear you, Lord. Come. Have your way in our lives, come have your way in every part of our lives, Lord. Even parts that we've kept hidden and kept aside. But come, today we invite you, we say come have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we sang this, suddenly I realized how it uh, lined up with the sermon. I had not planned that. I had not chosen the song with reference to the sermon at all. And yet there was such a clear connection. I think obviously God is speaking to us about stilling our hearts and uh, drowning out other voices and drawing close to hear him. I just feel my ears burning and I feel God is saying that he wants to give us listening ears to hear his voice clearly. Good night. 
Spirit, we come with open hands, open hearts, and say, Come, Holy Spirit, fill us afresh, be poured out afresh upon us this morning. Even if you're already present, we ask for more of you. Come and fill us with your love and with your power, we pray. Holy Spirit, come and set this church on fire. want to burn for you, Lord.
Father, we trust that you've accepted our worship this morning and it has been a pleasing fragrance and delighting your heart. You say that we're available, fill us and use us. Lord, we want to be consumed for you, Lord. We're believing for open heavens over our cities. We're believing for a mighty manifestation of your kingdom coming in our midst. We thank you so much for this morning, for speaking to us, for equipping us afresh. The all honor, glory, praise.
to you alone. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shanti, it's uh, Auntie's which birthday? 99. 99? Wow. I'll just keep this ready first. Oh, not I'll wait till you finish playing. Yeah. Mm. Here this one. Okay, so we wanted to first uh, share a little bit of Auntie Kurian's worship. Okay, the small three-minute clip. You can sit this one to the chair. Okay. Um, first, Auntie sings in English, then in Malayalam. And then the third song is singing in Malayalam and giving us the translation as well. Okay, And all of you who are shy and inhibited to move, just watch Auntie's movements. Okay, She actually rivals Rinal <laughs> in her movements. As you, as you will see, don't laugh. You don't believe me, just watch. All things bright and beautiful. All creatures great and small, all things white and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, He made the growing colors. He made the tiny wings All things bright and beautiful All creatures great and small All things wise and wonderful The Lord God made them all The purple-headed mountain the river running by, the sunset and the morning. Enorulla nen sarva nan magal kaiya endu cheyendu nena ke shubara epot endu cheyendu. Nena ke chupara Nanne kondende ullam Nanne nerayunne Nanne kondende ullam Nanne nerayunne Sanamode dudhi padidunne Sanamode dudhi padidunne Yeshuveno ki jeevi pan, eva e kaan chi kyunyan. I long, these are the things I long for, to be like Jesus. Yeshuve pole, yeshuve pole ayuvan, yeshuven vaku vakuvan. Yeshuveno ki jeevi pan, eva e kaan chi kyunyan. Ura pike ne en nada, nera ka en ne shudhalma, Christan mahatvata lenyan, mutub niran yu shubhipan. May I shine with the spirit of Jesus filling me. Yes, yes, you were for to be like Jesus. Yeshu ven vaku kaku van Yeshu ven oki jeevi pan To look at Jesus and live like Him Neva ye kaan shi kyun no yaan These are the things I long for and ask Anila to pray for Amchi. You can sit here. Okay, I don't know if I'll be able to pray, but I just want to say, uh, I think last year or year before last year, Amchi's birthday, I've got this verse, so I'm reading that. 
you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born, even to your old age and grey hairs. I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you, I will carry you, I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Okay, let me read that again because... Okay. It was Isaiah 46, verse 3. You whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born, even to your old age and grey hairs, I am he, I am he who, who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Okay. Let's pray for auntie. Jesus, we really don't have the words to adequately thank you for auntie, Lord, for her life and just everything that it encompasses and everything connected with it. I just want to especially just want to thank you today, Lord, because we just see a revelation of your faithfulness, your provision, your beauty, your creativity, your love, your grace, and so much more just through her life and your presence there. So we just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the years that have gone by. Thank you for this present moment. And thank you for the glorious days that lie, lie ahead. Together, Lord, we just want to honor you and honor Auntie's life. And we want, Lord, to just commend her and entrust her into your matchless and loving and tender and faithful care. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Holy Spirit, come and fill Auntie afresh. Even right now with the spirit of worship, uh, creativity, that even in this coming year, uh, she, will, she will be able to worship you in new and creative ways and continue to delight your heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we all unmute and sing for auntie? Everybody happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Auntie. Happy birthday to you. We're glad God made you. We're glad God made you. We're so glad God made you. Happy birthday, Auntie. Happy birthday, Everybody's thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus bless you, God bless you, Father God bless each one of you. Use you in ways that He shows you. Thank you, Jesus, for all these loving followers, loving children of yours. Bless them, bless each one of them. Show them what they are to do. Show them how they are to do everything. Be their strength, be their joy, be their everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Hear my prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amuchi. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Amuchi. 